Fishing is not easy. It takes lots of effort. You have to be patient. You have to be in the right place at the right time. Jesus told us to go fishing, but not for fish you find in the water. Jesus wants us to fish for people by sharing the love of God with them. It won't be easy. We have to be patient and pray to be in the right place at the right time. It's time to go fish. Good morning, Point of Praise. Good morning. It is good to be here. Uh, I am AB. I'm the associate pastor here at The Point, and I'm glad that you got to The Point this morning. And as the uh, title package, as we call it, that little introduction, it says that we've been talking about go fish. Pastor mentioned it earlier uh, in our service today about the idea of go fish. This series, quite honestly, stands as a pivotal moment in our history. It stands as this is not just something to do. I don't know when we're going to go back to this series in this way, but we stand at a place and at a time that we're going to look back to now and say, remember the growth? Remember when we were averaging, I don't know, 97 people and we jumped up to 150, 200, 250? We're going to remember this time. That jump doesn't happen unless we go fish. Now, we've been talking about this. I'm going to quickly review. There's a lot of stuff over the last few weeks. We're going to make sure these sermons are available to you because the information here is so incredibly important. And my hope just today is to give you a little bit more that can also get you into this idea of go fish. In fact, when Jesus started off his ministry here on earth, that three and a half year period, he began to call his disciples. And right from the beginning, he talked about the agenda. His agenda was, hey, come and follow me and follow me and I will make you something. The thing that he says he's going to make us, Jesus said, I'm going to make you something that you currently are not. And what he said was, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. I'm going to make you a fisher of people. I'm going to make you someone who goes out and lets people know that Jesus Christ came to earth. He died for my sin after living a sinful life. He died for my sin. He lived, he had no sin in his life, but he took my penalty. I got to make this personal. Can you make it personal? He took my sin. Say, he took my sin. He took my sin. He nailed it to the cross. He paid the penalty for sin because the wages or the payment of sin what is what? Do you, is death. Yeah, and that death is, 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 is eternal separation from God the Father. It's not being in relationship with our Father. But he reconciled that. He, he made that okay because he took our sin. But then death could not hold him back, which in three weeks we're going to celebrate like crazy the fact that Jesus Christ died for our sin, but he conquered death. And on that third day, he got up. Conquering death, that's the good news. And so we know that Jesus said he's going to make us something that we're not. Who we are, though, is he says it, to follow him, it means that we're going to do what? Fish. To follow him means to fish. And that's so important. So again, this idea of fishing is incredibly important because it is how he planned to be able to make sure that the message that God sent him for our sin could reach every single one of us. We're here today because somebody took this seriously. In fact, those 12 disciples that became apostles, they really took this seriously. They didn't know what he meant when he said it. They didn't follow him because he said, go, you go make fishers of men. You're going you're to be fishers of men. They didn't follow him for that. They followed him because, like us, Jesus did something for them. He fixed their marriage or he, he, he got them out of a penalty. He got, he got them out of, of some financial situation. They followed him because he blessed them so abundantly with fish at one point that they were set up for months and months and months. They followed him for selfish reasons, which we often do. But he said, go fish. And before long, they understood exactly what he meant. So we've been talking about this. We understand that some of us, as we were talking a little bit last week, and if you missed Tuesday night, uh, we, we kind of talked a little bit about this, but this idea of going to fish says that we are in someone's life, we are preeminent. In someone's life, we have um, that preeminence is that you actually are someone, you're calling uh, 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 someone preeminent because it means that they are truly outstanding and you are someone's connection to the eternity that God wants for us that you are the connection there's somebody that will never hear me 
because they don't like the way I dress, they don't like the way I talk, they think I'm from whatever. They won't hear me, but they'll hear you. And preeminence means that you're set up. You are here today, not by just chance. You're here because God wants you to understand that there's someone in your path that will not hear the message of salvation unless you bring it. So you're preeminent. Also, as we talk about this preeminence, there's something that, that I ask you to add to your prayer because as preeminent as we might be, as much as we understand the, the idea of go fish, some of us are scared. I, I put my hand up. I, I, I listen. I, I, got, I, I accepted the Lord when I was very, very young. I, first time I accepted the Lord, and I, I shared a little bit of that with you as I shared my letter, which I hope you all wrote too, uh, my letter to my parents. I was six years old when I accepted Jesus for the first time. And to my knowledge, I, I, I accepted him, but I grew, and, and I was 12, 13 when I, I remember recommitting my life again, and again, 16 and 18 and 21. I mean, I've been committing my life to God, and I've been, I've been committing to follow his way, but I can remember being so ineffective at sharing the gospel that I couldn't, I couldn't make it happen. And today, we're going we're gonna to kind of go along because, see, we prayed this prayer. I've been praying this prayer this week, and the prayer is, Lord, enable me, your servant, to speak your word with great boldness. How many people are praying that prayer? There's a few of us. I'm hoping that the rest of us will join in and pray that prayer. If you are a Christ follower, being a follower means to fish, you want to pray this prayer. You want to be able to make sure that as you pray this prayer, you're asking God for his spirit to dwell in you, to empower you to be able to connect with people. So we talked about praying this prayer, but there are still some of us, if you're like me, they're still kind of like, oh, man, you want me to talk about what to who? When? Doing this up here is actually a lot easier than doing this perhaps with one-on-one -on -one with someone. We may, well, unless, of course, you're scared of public speaking. But other than that, this is a lot different, and to me, in many ways, easier than one-on-one -on -one with someone. So some of us might be really, we got some trepidation, we've got some fear of talking to, to other people about God and, and, and talking to them about G Jesus. We, we get a little shaky on that one. So today, I want to let you know that you actually have someone with whom, actually some ones with whom you can connect, because this idea of fishing was never meant to be a solo venture. You were never meant to just go off by yourself. In fact, not even just two. I understand that you know, that can be effective. But today, I want you to realize what we as a church, we as the point of praise, Family Life Center, are going to do. I want to make sure that you understand you're not alone. There's somebody's who were designed to help you to fish. And so when I think about this idea of fishing, we go to the next slide. Um, I'm gonna take you to the, to the book of Matthew. Um, and if you have your Bibles, please go there, Matthew, the 16th chapter. And write this down so that you can, on your own, you can go and you can study this and you can uh, kind of go through. And I, I encourage you, as you're reading through and we are in a time of consecration and fasting, um, and, and anybody, anybody fast this week? Do, do something di different, whether that was fasting from food from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or, or fasting w w whatever period of time. Maybe you're fasting from social media. Uh, maybe you're fasting from some friends and some other things uh, or television. My hope is that you are doing that. And while you're doing that, I ask as you write the scripture down to do some reading, to make sure, hey, is he, is he saying what was right? Here's what's cool. There was a time when you had to rely only on what the pastor said. You had to rely on only what the speaker said. You had to rely only on what they said, but now you can read it. I know that's not a big deal to you, but do you realize there was a time when you could not read the word because it wasn't, it wasn't available? Thank God. Somebody say thank God for the printing press. And thank God for the the idea of having a, a cell phone with a, with, a, with, with a word on it. So you can do this on your own. I want you to definitely write down Matthew 16th chapter. And, and basically, let me say what's going on here so we can, we can kind of place you in the context of this idea that you don't have to do this fishing in a solo manner. And this is so important. This, this is a, an important, um, it, it may not be 
uh, uh, urgent for you right now, but I hope is that you're, it arrives to the level of importance that you understand what this is all about. Jesus is, um, is walking with his disciples, and as he walks with his disciples, the word says Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Now, <laughs> If you were to ask people, well, who do people say I am? Uh, people would probably look at you and say, people are not saying anything about who you are. I mean, yeah, you're not that important. But for Jesus, people had a reaction to Jesus. They either loved him or hated him. And he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And so in the 14th verse, when he goes, he says, they reply, the disciples reply, some say John the Baptist which is kind of interesting because John the Baptist just a, a couple months prior had been beheaded and killed. So I don't know if they believe some kind of reincarnation thing happened immediately, but they said John the Baptist. They also said, um, others say Elijah, a prophet that they of course knew very, very well. And then others still said Jeremiah or, or, or one of the prophets. So they had something that they were relating to this person who they knew wasn't like a regular person, they realized that somehow this person was, was, was different than, than just the average Joe. And so Jesus is there, and they, they give this reply. But then he asks, what about you? What about you? Who do you say I am? Who do you say that Jesus is? This is such an important question. In fact, with all the things, it's one of the things I, I remember kind of coming to this realization that it doesn't matter almost anything else that you can ask. This question of who do you say Jesus is, is the question you must grapple with, you must answer. If you are here today and you've not, uh, you've not, you've not committed yourself to Christ, you don't consider yourself a Christian, a Christ follower, this is the question you have to ask. Who, who is Jesus? And who is Jesus to you? Because when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter whether there were dinosaurs on the boat and how exactly did Adam and Eve have children and like who did they marry and have children, all that stuff, it doesn't matter. You got to get to the place where you answer the question for yourself, who is Jesus? And that's just an aside there, but I understand, understand as we fish, that's the primary question, who is Jesus? And so what's interesting is, is, is Jesus is asking them, and as he asked them, Peter, Simon Peter answers him and says, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the one that was promised, the son of the living God, not just a prophet from God, you are God. That stirs some people. That, 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 that's, the, that's the dividing line for a lot of people. We can talk about God, but when we start talking about Jesus and the fact that Jesus is God, he's the Messiah, he's the promised one, he's the one who God said he would send here to be able to liberate his people, but all people. And Peter says, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, the son of the living God. Well, Jesus replies to him and says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. You didn't get this on your own. You didn't, Simon, that's not something that you, that you got there by yourself. This was not something that was, uh, was of your own thinking. And then he says something interesting here. And I tell you that you are Peter. No, 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 my name is Simon. No, no, you're Peter. Jesus, in the moment, decides to rename an adult. You're Peter. And, and, and Peter means little rock. Now, this might be familiar to you because pastor spoke about this, I don't know, mid-year, when were we talking about kingdom? It was last year we were, we were all in this. And you were, uh, you may not, do you remember this? You, you remember your, your message? You, you remember? Okay. <laughs> But I was remembering that Peter, Peter, little rock, and, and, and it translates into a stone. And, and Jesus says, I'm going to call you Peter. Now, understand, you can go into Scripture and into antiquity. Before this moment, there was no one named Peter. There was no one named Stone. 
This is something, he, it wasn't a name, it was a thing. So let's call him Stone. And that's what Jesus says, you are Peter, and, and, and he names him something different at this point, and it's important for us to, to connect this. He says, you're Peter, little stone, and on this rock, now the rock that he uses here is different than the rock uh, or, or the stone that Peter was, was designated at. The rock that he talked about was, was something that was monolithic. It's like, uh, it, it, if you look in the Greek, it's like a huge cliff. It's, it's this big thing. You can't put your arms around it. You certainly can't pick it up. It's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's huge. It's big. It's a prudential rock. I mean, it's, it's, this is huge. And what he says is that Peter, I'm calling you Peter now, your little stone, and on this rock, I will build my church. I'm going to come to that word in, in a second. This may be, and for, for many people, uh, uh, denominationally, uh, in terms of religion, we, 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 there may be different thoughts about what this rock means. But Jesus says to him, upon this rock, upon this statement, the statement that you just said, I am the Christ, I am the Messiah, upon this I'm going to build something, I'm going to build my church. Now when we say church, a lot of us think about this building, church. A lot of us think about an edifice. We think about uh, bricks and mortar, but that's not the word Jesus used. He used a word called ecclesia. Ecclesia. And ecclesia was not a religious term. Ecclesia talked about a group of people who had kind of voting rights, that they would gather and, 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 and could make decisions. It was something that was more akin to what was happening in the town squares. It was more akin to what was happening kind of politically, but it was not a religious term. Jesus wasn't here to set up something that they were necessarily familiar with. He was, he was here to set up something brand new. And upon this statement that Peter just made, now we call him Peter, Stone, upon this statement, I'm going to build a movement. I'm going to build a movement that's going to allow people to understand who, in fact, I am as the Christ, as the Messiah, as the promised one. I'm building it upon that statement. And guess what? And the gates of Hades, the gates of hell, shall not overcome it. And in this process, Jesus is building this, this movement of people that are going to let others know that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he died for our sins, that he conquered death, and he's going to, he said, listen, this ecclesia, this movement is going to last. And if you think about the church, we've been through a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about, think about the thousands of years. Think about the hundreds of years of history of the church. It has been through stuff. It has been through the Crusades. It's been through the Inquisition. It's been through uh, Anabaptist movement. It's been, people have killed each other because of it. I mean, and we, by the way, some of the stuff we put on ourselves. I don't know, if you, have, you re, have you read history? Some of the stuff, but here's what's interesting, is what Jesus said, is that in spite, despite all that stuff, Nothing will overcome it. Yes. Nothing will overcome the movement. Yes. Nothing's going to overcome the things that I've put into place to make sure that the message of salvation gets to you today. Over th think about the success. Fully, uh, at least one third of the, uh, of the population of the planet consider themselves Christians and know, and, and, and completely two thirds of the planet have definitely heard about who Jesus is. And so the success of what he said was going to happen, we are living here today. We're living here today because someone took it seriously and they kept telling it. And what it was was that Jesus, the Messiah, lives. He's conquered death. He's done all that is needed in order for us to be in relationship with God. And upon that is what the ecclesia, the movement, is based. And so Jesus is saying this, and it's amazing that we here today, 2,000 years later, are worshiping a Jewish carpenter who came and died for us because of the success. Now, as you look at this, and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go back to, to a note here, I, I think that there's, a, there's many, many things that, that we can say about this, but we may have different ways of worshiping. 
Some of us, and this is amazing because some of us have come from, from, from Baptist backgrounds. Some have come from, from uh, other Pentecostal uh, denominations. We may have been apostolic. Some of us have come from Catholicism. Some of us come, maybe come from Judaism. You may have come from a lot of different places. Here's what's interesting. For those who have come from Christian traditions, it doesn't matter uh, 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 how you may baptize people. You may, you may worship in this way. You may believe in liturgy. You, th- there's all these differences. But here's the thing, you put us all in one room, all the people that say that they are Christians in one room, and what we will agree upon is that Jesus Christ is the savior of the world. What we will agree upon is that, that, that Jesus, and again, how we worship him, all that stuff, that's, that's kind of our stuff. That's the stuff of, of, from which I kind of want to move, that, that, that religious stuff. I, I get it, but what we will absolutely positively agree upon is that Jesus, Christ is Lord. And that's the essence of Christianity. Now, if you are believing something where Jesus isn't Lord, it ain't Christianity. If Christ is not central to your faith, it's not Christianity. Does that make sense to you? If Christ is not center, it's not Christianity. I, I said that because I want you to understand, we all believe that Jesus Christ is a unique son of God. And, and it's interesting because there's so many things that rely on this. Now, you, right now you're going, okay, so JB, what's the connection between like go fish and this idea that Jesus like, said on this rock, Peter, a little stone, on this statement that I am Christ, I'm the Messiah. What, what's the connection that you want to build this ecclesia? What's the connection that, that the gates of hell won't pr- overcome it? And that's the connection I want you to make. And if you're here today as a believer, I need you to make this connection also because it's going to allow you to understand you're not alone in this fishing expedition. You're not by yourself. And for those who are here, you don't like really believe um, anything and you came because you thought you might meet somebody here because, you know, here is where, you know, people who are kind of on their way doing something might be able to find somebody. Maybe you you lost a bet and you'd rather do this than go to lunch. I don't know. If you're here, not a believer, I'm, we're giving you a peek behind the curtain so you can see what we're up to. You can see what we're about. You can see and you're going to hear why it is that we believe this idea of fishing is so incredibly important. And so, and so when, we, when we think about this, I, w- I want you to understand that the church, is, the church is supposed to be your partner in fishing. What we're doing here today, and not every church does this. This is so important. As I sit and I've talked hours and hours with Pastor Lewis, we, 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 we talk all the time. And, we, and if, you're, if you're around, if you actually come on, on some weekday and both of our cars are here, you could probably stand in the parking lot and hear us. Because he's really loud. Now, I might be here keeping you a while, but he, you're going to hear him. Anyway, what we're excited about is something that God is doing that's different. And any place where people have caught this idea of going and fishing, and by the way, it's not an optional one, but for many churches, they don't necessarily take this with the priority that Jesus has taken it, to go fish. Our growth, the reason why we built this, long before you sat here, most of you, many of you, there are some here that have been here since the, since the 90s and when we started planning this, but there's a bunch of you. How many people have been, are just getting here in the last five years? This, just last five years, you're coming to the point. That's a lot of hands. That's a lot of hands. Some of you, you weren't in the round when we talked about God. He didn't ask us to build this just so it's a, a beautiful building. We see 500 people in this. You know why? Because as we've been talking, Pastor Lewis, I've been talking, it's about how do we fill this place? Not for us, not because it's a monument unto us or any of you, because we know that life is better with Jesus, and we are better at life with Jesus. And if you believe that, I'm going to talk about this a little bit next week, you can't keep that to yourself. And so with the passion we've, we've talked about, we, we've got we've to be a church like none other. And one of the things that's going to differentiate us from churches that are not growing is the fact that we individually take on this mandate to go fish. But when you do it, we want to be the church that partners with you. 
We want to be the church that allows you to know that you're not on your own when it comes to this. And so all that we're doing is to be your fishing buddy. That you are here, you're out there fishing, and we want to make sure that you can bring people here and know that they're going to understand and hear the message of Jesus Christ. We have to have the certainty that if I can just, if you, if you, if you look at the way that, um, that many who came to Jesus, uh, when, they, when they went back to their, 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 their relatives or they went out to, to someone else or some, Jesus healed people, they immediately began to, to say, no, you got to come and see. You, you, you c- c- come and see. I may not have all the answers. I may not be able to, to tell you like exactly when the, when, the, when the ark was built or where it was. I, I may not be able to tell you like again whether the dinosaurs were on that ark. Or I, don't, I may not be able to tell you all the mysteries and stuff, but I want you to come and see. I want you to come and, come and see. Uh, Nathaniel did that to his brother. Uh, 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 Andrew did that with his brother. You come and see Jesus. Come and see, I want you to come and see a place where Jesus is moving in spectacular ways. I want you to come because there are people there that you probably know. She's a Christ follower? Oh, I know, he's different now. I want you to come and see what it is that Jesus is doing in the lives of people. But here's the deal. We are setting up, and I mean, we're currently in the midst of this. There are people today, listen. You hear that up there? You know what that's about? That's about if I can get people here who can experience, whose children can experience what we're hearing, and they're moving, they're doing stuff. You know, kids are coming out and saying, I want to go back there. I remember one one woman and and her child came, and they, they came, and then they left, and they came back because her child was like, no, I like this better. There are people who, who you know, we're not trying to do church as you know it. This is not about holy huddles. If I'm off, you come and just get the mic. We're not about having a holy huddle, and we can't be satisfied with the fact that we're going to heaven. Next week, that's next week's sermon. We have to be about the business that Jesus said we're about. And what we're trying to do is be your buddy. What we're trying to do is to make sure that when we, uh, when we invite people, that they have the best experience that they can. We know that, that, that when people come, they're going to be hungry for something. There are people, and, and I can remember... I can remember this one, one story um, where, uh, and this is someone I know, I won't mention any names, but they, they brought someone to church. It was the, this, this person's mother was older. This person came, and she, I think he may have been in his 40s, and um, his mother said, you got to come. You got to come to this church. Now, this church is a church that was, that was like we are trying to do, focused on fishing, and what they did and what they do is what we're doing. And making sure that there's someone in the parking lot with a smile, helping to park the cars. That there's somebody when they come in that's greeting them and giving them a connection card and a bulletin and seating them in, in, a, in a really wonderful way. That, that, that people are being embraced. In, in the church they went to, they, they had, they had a, a kid's point kind of thing, that we, our children's church. And there are all these things, and the music was excellent. And people could read what was on the walls. They could see what was going on. They could sing with them. They, the message was clear. And there was excellence in production. And it wasn't production only, it was spirit-filled production because people prayed as they planned, and they planned and they prepared. And so that's what we're talking about. If you bring somebody to this, this young man comes, he's 47 years old, and after the church, after the service, he said, well, well that's not church. That, that's not church. Because in his mind, what church was, was something he didn't want to be part of. It was something that he had kind of rejected. But what they brought and what we are bringing is something different. And what we're bringing is something that people are going to be able to hear. The Spirit of God is absolutely working in us. 
And I believe the work that we will see is going to be resulting in people going down in the water and, and, and being baptized. People are hearing their testimonies on film. That people are absolutely proclaiming that they are different people because of Jesus. But we want to be your fishing buddy in that. We want to be able to do that. There's so much that, that, that I could say, but I'm convinced that if you can get on church people, unbelieving people in the community where Christians are, it, 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 it's, it's going to change people's lives. Let me, let me go to the, yeah, I guess you're there. Go, let me go to the next scripture or next slide. Um, so, so Jesus is, is talking, let's see, go to the next one and one more. Okay, so Matthew 18. This is just a, 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 a chapter over or so. Um, Jesus says, says this. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. It goes on to say in verse 20. For where two or three gather in my name, yes. there I am with them. Yes. Understand, when we get together, just two or three of us, and we get, we get together with a Jesus agenda, wow. when we get together f fulfilling what he said, which was go and fish, and when we get together putting excellence, when we get together with a mindset, not, 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 not that you, the 99, are not important, but we want to always keep in mind the one. Are you hearing what I said? When this becomes not just about me and mine, and by the way, these last few weeks, these last few sermon series that we've been doing since December, it's been about you, the Christ followers. But when we can do that, and that's why I talk to the people, there's maybe four or five of them, five or six of them, if we're doing what we're doing right, that aren't believers here today, if we're doing what we're right. So, but, but most of all, I want to keep in mind that they're here. I want to keep in, I want to keep in mind that someone who doesn't know Christ is here. But here's what the word says. And Jesus says, where two or three are gathered with a Jesus agenda, with an agenda that says we're trying to win people to Christ, with, with an agenda that says we know that life is better and we've got to make sure that people understand that. When they gather, Jesus says, I'm there. Do you realize this side of heaven, the place where people can most experience the presence of Jesus is here. Isn't that the point? Shouldn't that be the point? We have to make that the point. Wherever two or three are gathered with an agenda that says, I want to reach him, I want to reach her, I want to reach them. When, when we, we get together and we can, we can do all that we can do with purpose and perfection and production and in the anointing of God upon our lives that people will come in here. I truly believe that it is the closest you're going to get to heaven is where two or three are gathered. And, 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 and so what we try to do is to, is to get people who will understand this in a way that will allow them to, 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 to serve strategically now, we, we talk, go to the next slide. The church is the most powerful, pervasive entity on the planet. Amen. That's what Jesus was said, is uh, 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 upon this rock, upon the, the declaration that Peter made, I'm going to build this ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail, shall not overcome it. We are the church, and the church is the most pervasive, the most, ent the most powerful entity on the planet. The church was intended and designed to be a partner in the fishing process. And let me be more clear. The point was intended and designed to be a partner in the fishing process. And so I believe that what we've got to do is commit to doing what we need to do here. You've got people who are constantly in prayer. We meet all the time. We're talking all the time. We're, we're praying all the time. We're doing that because God is trying to set up an entity. This, this, when we talk about, for those of you who have been around, you may be in leadership, when we talk about systems, the systems aren't in some kind of rigid way of doing Systems are allowing us to make sure when somebody goes in the parking lot, when they turn from Hurley Avenue and come down that driveway, that from the time they hit our property, that they are meeting Jesus in some way, faith, grace, shape, or form. That's what we're about. That's what we're about. 
And, and what, what God is asking for is the church is not a building. It's the movement of people. And God has done something in your life that is absolutely, again, makes you preeminent for somebody who's going to walk through those doors. So important is that fact. The church was intended and designed to be a partner. And so let me give you a couple of questions before we get ready to go. Two crucial questions. One, are you investing and inviting? Now, you were asked to do that. My hope is that you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're thinking about that more. You've, you've got at least 10 people that you have. My hope is that you have 10 people you're inviting. Anybody have 10 people you're inviting to Easter? Keep it up, keep it up, 10, 20, 40. That's not going to get us there. That's not going to get us to the 350. I, I, need, I need you to invest and invite. I, I need you to, you know, again, you've got those people inviting, but let me tell you what investing looks like. Investing is, are you serving strategically? Are you serving? Right now, when I think about this, I think about the fact that we come into a building every week. There are so many things that need to be done. I just talked about Kids Point. That's our children's church. You realize that that doesn't just happen by itself? How many people know Elise Sneed? There's a few hands. You know why you don't know her? Because she's never down here. She's always up there. And she's up there because she's dedicated to her own children and to your children. And we need people to strategically, I know, again, you may not shout on this one. It's not my goal to make you shout. It's my goal to get you to volunteer. My, it's my goal to get you to strategically volunteer in such a way that you will serve this entity who is your fishing buddy. You see, there are churches that you can go to that, that won't, people will walk in and go like, what? What's going on? What, what are they trying to do? We want this to be so perfect, but the perfection comes as you decide to serve strategically. Some of you have a beautiful smile and a wonderful voice. We need you at the door. Amen. Anetta and Todd said, listen, we need people who can just wave a flag. You may not understand. Well, we'll tell you what that's going to be about. We know some people who might be photographers, uh, people who might be able to, to play the drums. We need people who can take themselves, give up what you have, your time, your talent. I think about, uh, if I can go to, it seems like an offshoot, but, but, but uh, I, I think about um, uh, our sister Debbie Spicer, um, what she did beautifully for our Italian dinner. Now, if you, anybody come to the Italian dinner? This is a skill that not many people have. What does she do? She took this and she's putting it in the service of God. People walked in, and I don't know how many of them uh, were gonna be able to get back, but I'll tell you what, when they think about the point, they're thinking excellence. When they think about the point, they're thinking, oh, they, they're doing this. The people in the culinary team, we always shout out to them, yeah, but you did your thing. That's what you did. So then when they ate that food, that was great. You may not see that as being strategic, but it's very strategic. We want to make sure anytime you interact with the point, if you pick up a, a, a card from us, if you pick up a letter from us, a flyer, we want it to be excellent. When we do what we do, and we don't get it right all the time, but understand what we're trying to do is to give perfect praise to God through what we do. We need you, though, in order to do that, to serve strategically. And you know why you want to do that? Because there are people on your list who you want them to see Jesus. And we're trying to remove every barrier that we can so they can see Jesus. I, I, I believe that when people come through the door, there should be nothing that offends them until the word of God might do it. Now, I, I, that's him. That's him. All right. But nothing else should offend them until they hear the word of God. And I'm saying this, this again, we may not go this way in terms of sermon series for who knows how long. Until we hit 250 next year or whatever, at the end of the year, whatever. I mean, but, but here's the deal. I need you to understand we have to invest and invite. And we need to be able to serve strategically. Uh, is, is, Anetta, is Anetta around? Is she? Do, do I, did I lose Anetta? I don't know. Because I, I want to make sure you see her. Or, or on the back of, take out your connection card. Everybody has a green connection card today? We write that. We don't, we, we, don't, we don't do these just by chance. There's actually thought given. And so the idea of investing and inviting is what we want you to do. If you are willing 
to help out with our children's church. If you're willing to do those things that, that may help again to greet people or to help park, we're gonna have a bunch of cars here. Here, hey, strategically, those of us that come every Sunday, how many people come most Sundays? Most Sundays you're here, like, yeah, yeah. Those of us, okay, for the, with the exception of those who might not be able to walk well, I'd like every single one of us to park back there. So my mom and I will do that. Um, anybody else? Yeah. Why, why do I say that? Because we want the people who are, who are coming as our guests to be able to park closer to the doors. Right? We want to be able to do that. And, and those are the things that we do strategically. Strategically says, I'm thinking about the future. Strategic says, I'm thinking about something beyond me. I got to think about how what I'm doing right now is going to impact people going forward. So on that connection card, feel free to write down what it is that you would do, that you will absolutely strategically serve, that you will invest and invite. I really believe that what God is doing for us right now and what he's hoping to do with us in the future is to make us into such a powerful entity that we're a machine, that, we are, that, that, that we're not just coming for some fix in our spiritual walk. When he says, I'm going to build my church, I want you to start conceiving of church something different than you've ever known. If we begin to do things differently, and we're able to do things that will allow us to truly, I mean, listen, right now, I've been talking, pastor is, is he's, he's preparing what's going to happen on Palm Sunday and Easter. I mean, and I believe, and, we're, and we, can, we pray for him. Don't we pray for him? If you're on Tuesday, we pray for him. When you pray for him, pray God is, a, is just going to uh, uh, just a, a, anoint him that he's going to give him the right words. He's going to give him the right message because we're, he's part of this whole partner that we are going to be. And we're setting up things, we're doing things, we're rehearsing, they're rehearsing after service today. People have already been rehearsing dancing. We're, we're doing some things that we're gonna try to, try to just, again, make this spectacular experience. Not so people go, are entertained, but so that they see Jesus, and they see Jesus through an anointed production and performance that will allow people to see. He's the one we're performing for, that we're pointing people to him, that we're going vertical to him. It's not about us. I'm sorry, that may not really meet with your theology or your upbringing, but this church, in fact, here's the thing. If you don't believe, hmm, I, I, I'm going to, if your thought is, I'm kind of with you, you know, I love Jesus, but I'm not about this inviting thing. I'm not sure about serving. I like to do here, you know, I do this coming 1030. You know, I can certainly be out to, you know, 99 by quarter after 12 or so. That's what I want to do. I love Jesus, but I don't want to do that. I, you may not want to come here. I'm sorry. You may not, because here's my fear. If we get enough people that are saying like, yeah, I'm not have to do that, I'm not sure Jesus is going to show up. Because he said where two or three are gathered in his name with a Jesus agenda, he would be there. If we get too many people who are apathetic, too many people who are like, yeah, I'm not sure it takes all that, then he may not show up. And then we're going to just be a regular church. I don't want to be a regular church. I don't want, I want to be an ecclesia. I want to be people. I want to be your fishing buddy. We want to be your fishing buddy. We want people to come to Jesus. We want that to happen. How many people want that to happen? Stand with me this morning. There are people who are right now destined to be eternally separated from Jesus. Because we've got to be more effective. Yes, I don't know exactly what it is that you do, but the invest in inviting, the strategic serving is so incredibly important. I don't apologize for what God has given to us here. We're not like any other church. I don't want to be like any other church. Do you want to be like any other church? You can just do that. No, no, we want to be... The churches that are growing and they're effective in reaching God is because they get this. They get that the fact that we, as, as, as followers of Christ, must fish. And churches that are growing also do so because they have committed 
to being a fishing buddy. We commit to be your fishing buddy. As leaders in this church, as people who are volunteering, we commit that we're going to make this the best church and experience for those that are coming. We commit that you, you, you can guarantee that between now and next Sunday, as every week, we're praying, we're fasting, we're asking God for the ideas, we're asking God for the implementation of those ideas, we're asking God for people. You are, in part, answered to that prayer. So today, I really do want you, uh, before we go, to, to, to let us know on that connection card and make sure that you, you put it in the red bucket and we'll be in contact with you in, within these 24 hours about where you can fit in and where we can plug you in because we need that. We need people. We need you because we as a church, the point of praise, want to be your fishing buddy. Amen. There's somebody that you want that you know are going to be here and I guarantee you the Sunday that you bring them, you're going to be looking to see, okay, how... How they, how they doing? How they look on stage? What's, what's happening with the lights? I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be hypersensitive, and that's what we want. We want you to care about what happens here. And if you care, you do so in a way that's strategic. I believe God just truly wants us to do what he sent his son to do. And there are people who you're going to be able to look at who are going to write you a letter to say, here's how they were instrumental in me knowing Jesus, the Son of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you entrusted eternity of people, the people who you love, so much that you gave your Son. You entrusted to us the responsibility of getting them that message. And today, as we stand here today, like no other day, the, the 10th of March, 2024, a day that we've not seen, that we never will see again, we stand here today surrendering ourselves to you, wanting to be a fishing buddy as part of the point that will allow us to do what you said for us to do, which was to go fish. God, there are those of us that are here today or, or, or a little, little nervous. And, and today, God, we ask that perhaps you, you allay their fears and, and get them just simply to go out to people and say, come and see. Come and see. Come and experience Jesus. Lord, give us the, the boldness to be able to do that and at the same time be part of this point, this ecclesia that you placed here, 243 Hurley Avenue in Kingston, New York, that has an outreach, God, that is absolutely global that you want to prepare us to be the people who people will meet when they come in, that people will meet and see the love of Jesus. They may not even understand it, but they will feel it, God. And I truly believe, Lord, that we want to be a place where people go, well, that's different than the church I knew. God, we want to be effective. God, why else are we here if we're not fulfilling what you said for us to do? So give us, God, just that, that, that earnest unction, God, that, that desire to see people saved, to forget about all the other stuff that clouds the issue. God, we want to be a partner. Thank you, God, for empowering us to do so. Lord, we thank you that there are people that are here today under the sound of my voice that may even come to give their life to God, to give their life to you. And Lord, we ask that you would meet them here at the place of their need. Lord, as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection, as we prepare to celebrate your conquering death, God, give us all that we need to be able to execute the plans that you've given to us, that ultimately people will come into relationship with your son. Father God, we thank you again for the incredible opportunity that we get to pray directly to you. We knew, need no other go-between except for that of Jesus. And so we pray to you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So as you're getting ready to go, if there's anybody that wants and desires prayer, there'll be there those here to pray for you. Otherwise, would you take that connection card, make sure that you've told, told us where it is that you will serve and how you will invest and invite. If there's prayer requests, get them there and make sure they get into the red bucket.